And it does lead me into a, another question, which you brought up. At the end of the interview, they will inevitably ask you, do you have any questions for us? And like you said, you definitely want to have questions for them. So what are some of those questions that you should have? Obviously, there's a lot that you would go and find on your own by researching that company. and You would come up with maybe some more unique questions that pertain to you. But what are some good base questions that you think everybody should be asking at the end of an interview? Well, I think one good one would be uh, because because of the fact that uh, in this day and age, the interview, the relationship between the interviewer and the interviewee is, uh, is usually more balanced now than it was in, it has been in years past. So you want to go in with at least a little bit of a mentality that not only are they interviewing me, but I'm interviewing them. I'm, I'm going to assess them. Now you can, you, you, if you're thinking that way, you don't want to come across as being too aggressive in that mode as well, but they're going to understand as well. I mean, everybody who's interviewing you has been an interviewee, you know, and they got the job that they've got. So no one's going to take offense if they see signs that you are also assessing them. Okay. I mean, you want to work for a good company. You want to work for a company that has a good work environment, uh, that has a good work culture, you know, and all that. So questions like that, you might say, yeah, I'm just, I'm curious, I'm interested how, uh, uh, you know, when, when new hires come in, I mean, is it, what's the, what are you all seeing there? Are people that come in as new hires, are they staying for, you know, a long time? Are they leaving pretty quickly? You know, what you're getting at there is, uh, after people are hired, how, how long do they stay? Do they like it there? Or are they leaving? And if they're leaving, for what reason? So that would be a good uh, thing for you to know as you're assessing whether or not you want to take a job with that company. But it's also, it demonstrates to them that you're thinking that way, that you, you want to go to work for a company in which, you know, the work environment is healthy and people want to stay there. You know, they don't want to take a job and then leave pretty quickly. So you could frame a question, you know, think it through again ahead of time, rehearse it, but say, uh, what, you know, how's the turnover here? Is the turnover low? Is it high? Uh, particularly in this position that I'm applying for. I mean, what's the average length of time someone stays in this position before they, they move up or before they move out, if, if, they, if they do move out, you know? Because that's specific to the job, you know. There, if you ask them questions about, you know, well, how's your four hundred one k plan, or, um, you know, uh, what's what's the benefit plan like, um, you know, those are not those aren't bad questions necessarily. But um, in this day and age, they're not often the deciding factor at entry for entry level jobs, which most of our students will be in interviewing for entry level jobs. So. I think those are some great points there. Definitely a lot of people could benefit from those because you need to ask those follow-up questions at the end. You need to be able to engage with the person that you are being interviewed by. And like you said, it's kind of a change now where it's to the extent that sometimes uh, we are also interviewing the person who's interviewing us. It's kind of a back and forth conversation. And so you have to be able to engage with them in the conversation as much as they are engaging with you. But part of that is when you ask them follow-up questions, it all goes back to interest. Everything comes back to the interest that you display with that company. But also for you as an individual, you can find out a little bit more. You wanna know who it is you're going to be working for because that could be substantially quite beneficial for you in the future, especially not even in the future, but especially now, because, you know, sometimes there's a lot of things that are not readily available information. And sometimes you want to know, sometimes you need to get a little bit more in depth and there's nothing wrong with engaging in a follow-up question because it's good for equal transparency across the board between the person being interviewed to the interviewer and it 
in my opinion, can bring about some ease of mind. If at the end of this, you've answered a million questions, you've answered all the questions they have, but you're bound to have a couple of questions yourself. So don't be reluctant to go and ask those questions to them. They could be very beneficial to you and they can be very beneficial to your, the person who's interviewing you as well. So, yeah, no doubt. One, let me add one thing too on that, Thomas, because you're right. You made you made a very good point, and that is, um, some companies, some students will go to an interview for a company, and if they go, you should always go and research as much as you can about that company before you go into the interview. And in some cases, we, if you go to their websites and you go through their career uh, pages on their website, there'll be a lot of information, and. And if that's the case, if you've been able to already access a lot of information, you could say something like, well, if, when they say to you, well, do you have any questions for us? You, you might say, well, yes, I, I do. But, you know, it's great. Your website is so uh, full of information and informative that I got a lot of, uh, I learned a lot from that. So what, because I already uh, have access to that, I'm just interested in things about longevity and how long do people stay in this position before they get a promotion and so on. Now, on the other hand, if you're gonna to go to interview for a company that they don't have anything on their website, and it, it'll happen, you know, you, they just basically, you, you, hard, you don't even know if they have a benefit plan or a 401k plan or anything, then you can ask questions like that. You know, I mean, you, don't, you wouldn't wanna begin by saying, well, you know, I tried to find out some information about your company, but there's really nothing there. You know, you just leave that one go and say, well, I'm, I'm interested in, you know, just to make sure I have a good idea of what, what your benefit plan is. Is there a 401k, you know, medical insurance, all those things. And they'll have a ready answer for that because they, you know, they'll probably expect that to be a question. If you ask and it will show, like you said, that you, you're doing your research as well. And that wasn't available to you um, leading up to your interview. So all, all, right. you make, all, good, all good points you made there, Thomas. Uh, thank you.